In this week's episode of All to Know is Zero Season 2, we find out how much of a psychopath Slain is. Let me explain. Give me a moment. Slain is actually looking at the princess as if she was like a bird in a cage. Like a pretty bird he wants to keep in a cage. Slain is not really trying to fix her from what I can understand. From the meaning of this episode with the bird in the cage... It wasn't necessarily representing the new princess introduced in Season 2. It was to represent the princess that's in a coma. So Slane's a fucking psychopath. He, he, he has his princess in a display case. That's pretty much what he has. It's kind of fucked up. That, that's, that's really fucked up when you start thinking about it. Like, I, I have not really realized that watching Season 2. But with this episode, they make it very obvious Slane... He's kind of a little bit psychotic there. I mean, he, he he's keeping this girl he really loves in a glass case, pretty much, in his eyes, and just admiring her. The fuck? Like, the fuck, Slay? Like, what the fuck? Okay, so, I mean, you of course there's going to be other people out there that's going to interpret that differently, but, I mean, from my interpretation of that, he's keeping the princess in the case, pretty much, like, you know, the cryo tube or whatever. Not the cryo tube, like, you know, the stasis tube. Yeah, that, that's it. The stasis tube... To heal her, but technically he doesn't really want to heal her. He's just keeping her in that spot where he can always have her. So it's kind of I, I I don't know what to think about that like at all. I I really don't. So anyways, moving past that, let's just you know skedaddle past that because I I know for a fact you know that's not a good topic to be into. So anyways, this episode of Old Noah Zero Season Two episode for the most part exposition setup and that is. Pretty much the concept of this episode. That's exactly what it was. We once again have another episode that introduces death flag setups and just other things going on. The workings in the background pretty much setting up for what is going to happen in the future. And for the most part, the episode is very slow. I will be honest with you. The episode is very slow. And there's actually a lack of action in this episode. Which is quite surprising because if you think about it, I remember in the last review I did, literally in the last review... I said that it feels like All to Noah Zero Season 2 has been nothing but action every single episode. And in All to Noah Zero Season 1, there was some episodes that actually took away from the action and gave us, you know, character development, you know, set up and build up and stuff like that. And All to Noah Zero Season 2 hasn't really done that until this episode. So I'm glad this series, Season 2, decided to take a step back, stop with the action, which I love the action, don't get me wrong. I'm glad it took the time to take a step back and develop some, you know, plot lines and stuff like that, giving us some characterization, character development of these other characters, and I'm glad it took the time to actually do something like this. So the episode, for the majority, I could see how it might be boring to some, because if you're used to action in Old and Old Zero, most likely this episode's gonna bore the fuck out of you, I'm gonna be honest. If you love your action and all that, and you wanna see action in every single episode, this episode is gonna look very boring. But, majority of the episode was just meant to give characterization to that other count, also along with giving us some development of Inaho and Raylet, or Rayet, or whatever her name is, I, I always get her name wrong, pretty much giving us development between those two characters. And so, the episode is fine. It's a good episode. Like, I mean, there's not much really I can really discuss about this episode, because it's a very, very simple episode. Like, Inaho, we find out he actually has modified that eye like in that he's put in pretty much he modified that eye and expanded it somewhat where it can actually affect his brain if he goes too far with it so in a home like oh god that that's gonna be some dangerous shit in the future like that that's definitely not some obvious foreshadowing for a death flag because Inaho has experienced some weird shit going on with his brain. Like, he's been acting different, you know, showing emotions, slightly more emotions than he used to. And so I feel like that overall brain thing that was introduced or, you know, talked about in this episode, how it could possibly affect his brain before he realizes it, I'm willing to bet it's already starting to affect his brain. And that's probably what is going on here. So, obvious death flag is obvious. So, past that. You also have it to where the dude at the end, the other count that's very racist towards Earthlings, is like, oh, I'll, I'll challenge you to a duel, 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 I'll challenge you to a duel, and Slain is going to kick his ass, let, let, let's just be honest here, okay, he has the farces, he just, this dude is not going to stand up to Slain, you, you can't stand up to fucking Slain, no, no, it's not happening, it's not happening, I'm sorry, game over, man, you can go take your crusty ass back to your other floating, flying fortress, just go, go back to your fortress, Slain is going to school you, so, that dude, just gonna get wrecked, so, moving past that, I, we already know pretty much the outcome, We're, we shouldn't even really be surprised about that, 
the episode is a good episode. It is a very good episode. Pretty much you have to wear the setup with the count, like the good count. Inho sets up this little plot thread in this episode to where this dude is most likely going to help out Inho in the future. And probably going to lead to the downfall of Slain because this dude really actually wants a peaceful, you know, affair with Earth. Like, he wants to keep Earth in good condition, and he really didn't necessarily want the war to happen in the first place, and he's kind of more on the princess's side, so... He's not really a bad guy. And so Inaho actually uses this aspect with this dude and actually forces him to go find out where the real princess is to protect her. So I like that. I like how the setup of this episode was handled with that. It was a decent episode for the most part. So that's pretty much it. That, that, that's pretty much it of this episode. So tell me your thoughts. How do you feel about the psychotic slang keeping a little bird in the cage or, you know, his little girl in a showcase in a coma? Just think about that for a second. Let that process in your mind real quick. And how do you feel about... The dude that feels like he can kick the shit out of Slane at the end of the episode. Like, how do you feel about that? So, I love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi.